Welcome to the Random Awesome Memories Podcast. Hey there, Isaac. How's it going? Sure is. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> no, I mean, I guess sure is too. Um, it's been a while since we last recorded our last podcast. Um, it has been uh, roughly, what, two, two, two or three months? Three months? Two or three months, yeah. But the people that are listening to this aren't going to know the difference because they're going to hear podcast one, if they even hear it. I still don't know if we even have that podcast even still. I think that might be lost. So this we're just going to still continue to call this one number two, though, still. But if yes. for some reason the first one does go up, well, you won't even know the difference because... You'll be listening to the first one, and then the second one will come right after. So it's not like you had to wait like several months for the next podcast to come out. This is true. Hopefully, hopefully we can figure out a schedule. Hopefully, yeah. But anyways, um, I heard there was something you wanted to talk about in this podcast. Um, yeah, there was just a little thing. Uh, nothing, nothing anybody should recognize right away. Uh, something about a little called uh video game demos and video game kiosks oh uh, yeah so you want to yeah, explain yeah, yeah. to people what those are for so, those who uh, don't know what they are so if you were alive uh after the um invention of the xbox 360 you'll know that there's these things you can download for games some of the games called <laughs> demos well back in the day uh they were released physically in some some uh stores or even were packed in with games Oh. Uh, they're a really cool thing. Uh, kiosks, on the other hand, is something that you can still see today, not on a as a big scale as you used to, but basically kiosks are uh, demo stations where you can go into a store, play the console, play the games that are up and coming, and beg your mom and dad until their ears bleed about, <laughs> I want this game, I want this console. <laughs> so they were a lot of fun. Oh. <clears throat> Yeah, I definitely had plenty of experiences going to the mall as a kid and going to the local GameStop and checking out the kiosks. Oh, you, you know where I went to before it tur- got turned into a GameStop? We-, we had a local EB Games. Oh, gosh. Ooh, EB Games. We, actually, uh, in our mall, we had both that EB Games and a GameStop, and then oh. GameStop bought them out. And then they both became GameStop, and then one shut down and the other shut down, and now we don't have any GameStops in that mall. Yeah. <laughs> See, in my town where I'm from, where I was from, we had a GameStop in the mall. Then we had an EB Games that was like not too far away from the mall that was on its own in like a strip mall thing. And then right across from the strip mall, we had a Hollywood video. And uh, I'm trying to think what that game, there was a game store that was always associated with the uh, Game Crazy. That's what it was. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, Game Crazy. I need, oh, Game Crazy? I need to, uh, I need to look this up. I hope it's Game Crazy. Game Crazy. This is how you know that, uh, yeah, Game Crazy. It was an, uh, it was a video game retailer that was, uh, it was a subsidiary of Movie Gallery, and, uh, it was often located adjacent to the Hollywood video rental stores. So, yeah, we used to have a Hollywood vi- video rental store. I remember going to this Hollywood video uh, slash game crazy place and there was an actually one of the few like Dreamcast kiosks that I ever saw but I never played it because we literally went in there just to get a PlayStation 1 memory card since none of the other stores had it at the time. Rest in peace. Indeed. That that should be another thing we should cover. uh... Rest in peace. Uh Storage, storage, uh, storage mediums. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, that'd be a little cool, little, yeah. cool little trip for a minute, really. But we're not going to talk about those. Yeah, we're not. Because we're talking talk about, about demos. We're talking about demos. We're talking about kiosks. We're talking about those cool little things that occasionally uh, fast food and our franchise restaurants would give you to get you into their fucking doors. I'm looking uh, at you. I'm looking at you, Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. So tell us about those. So, uh, so fun fact, if you didn't know, uh, Pizza Hut and PlayStation had a little thing that going on where there was a contest in, I believe, what was it, 2000, not 2000, 1998, uh, was the first, was the first giveaway. It was the, uh, 
the play the pizza powered PlayStation giveaway through Pizza Hut. What they did is they uh, were actually they were actually selling these. They were selling uh, demo discs there if for five dollars a piece, and you had a chance to win two hundred thousand dollars. And the games that were on this demo disc were Gran Turismo, Metal Gear Solid, Crash Bandicoot Warped. It had the water level. Don't don't be excited about that. Oh, no. And uh, Medi- Medieval and Tomb Raider three. So it was a pretty solid selection. It was actually uh, how I first experienced Metal Gear Solid, Gran Turismo, before my dad bought it. And fun uh, fact, that that, di- that disc it smells like rubber. Fun fact, they actually did that. It's a scratch and sniff one. Oh, it um, is actually scratch and sniff? Nice. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 it smells like uh, car rubber, burning rubber. I'll try that with my disc because I have yeah. one of those. Real cool. Uh, yeah, that's how I also uh, experienced Crash Bandicoot Warped. Hmm. Uh, also, back in... What was it 1990 1999 a year after that giveaway uh pizza hut and playstation did another set except they had two demo discs um and it was when uh both crashed spyro big and they both had crash and spyro on the cover huh. uh and this 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 uh contest was for five hundred thousand hmm. dollars and on the crash one which i believe is disc one yeah the one with crash is disc one it has crash team racing my favorite kart racer of all time Ape Escape, my favorite Sony IP of all time. Like, give us, give us Ape Escape for Sony. Like, come on, you want to sell PS fives? Bring that series back. Yeah, Sony totally um, listens to us. Yeah, uh, Final Fantasy VIII, uh, Cool Borders Four, and a little known game. It's it's a little series that really, really, really obscure. It's called Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Dang, um, there's a demo for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really wish uh, there was some sort of you know remake of that that in in the sequel to that that are both fantastic games and then on the spyro one uh there was the next tetris oh, I, had that. I had that oh really yeah nice. it's great great game yeah next tetris is a pretty good game uh, i played at a friend's house ah. um tomb raider uh the last revelation sled storm uh spyro ripto's rage and uh gran turismo 2 yeah, so it, in demo discs, these were these were at least in, um, in Pizza Hut, these were five dollars a piece. Oh wow! But yeah, just because you were you went in and you were expecting to get a chance to win the five hundred thousand huh. dollars, um, but yeah, demo discs were a good little way to just experience a lot of games and a lot of early stages of development, like. I remember I owned both CTR, like Crash Team Racing, and this demo disc. And there's changes between this demo and the final game that are totally different. Like the sprites, when it comes up on the uh, the position, but like the top four spots, whatever, whatever someone switches to a spot, it switches to their icon. Well, all those icons just aren't used in the final game. Those must have been early like beta builds or like just yeah. earlier builds of the game that they submitted to put out as a demo because those don't exist and also some of the ways that the the maps and some of the sounds like some of the music a lot of those have changed between that release and the final release of the game so that's why i like demos it's 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 a good way to see how early builds of the game were looked like without actually like looking at the beta builds yeah um going on the playstation type of thing um when I was a little kid, I don't remember too much about it, but I know re- distinctly, vividly remember seeing it on my dad's old uh, like bookshelf. He had a bunch of the PlayStation magazine, and Ooh. I know a couple of those had a couple demo discs, but I know my dad had long since I'd gotten rid of them. But one of the things he did keep was that he had PC Mag uh, demos. And Ooh. I snatched up a couple of those. And I don't remember all the ones that I have because most of the ones that I had were, like, they were online only, so they wouldn't work today. But one that I specifically remembered, I don't know if I have it with me or if it's at my desk, but I have a demo of Psychonauts. Ooh, and okay. I have yet to check that out because the cover when I was a kid looked so weird that I was just like, oh, this is probably... I didn't even think it was, like, a game. I thought it was, like, one of the weird psychedelic, like, CDs that my dad had. So I never thought about it until I heard and learned about 
Psychonauts and how great of a game it is. And I'm like, wow. Oh yeah, Psych- Psychonauts wish- is fantastic. Yeah, I uh, wish I would have played it. So I, I, I remember those. I think demos are kind of cool in a way too, where like, even if you were a kid and you didn't play all the games on the demo, you probably saw the name. And it, even if you didn't play it, growing up, and hearing people talk about the games that you remember only because of those demo discs, yeah. they were on the demo discs, it's like a good way to gauge like, oh, that game I never played. Apparently it's a classic. Maybe I should go back and check it out. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a, definitely. Yeah. It's, 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 it's kind of like a weird little like way to like plant a, plant a memory, like a false sense of nostalgia. It's like, uh-huh. I never played that game, but I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, magazines and, like, restaurants and all that had, like, a lot of demo discs. But one of the other things that's kind of demo-related that I had growing up as a kid was I actually, my first ever PC game was actually a demo in the form of Shareware, which, if you don't know what Shareware is, basically it was where uh, games that were basically for free that were uh, basically meant for you to share with other people. And then if you really liked the game... Sometimes you could, it was just like a part of a game. So if you paid money to the developers or the publishers, they would give you the full game. Or sometimes you would just send them money and be like, hey, I really like your game. Here's money to fund it. And a thing, it's just a thing that's died out. But when I was growing up, um, my first ever PC game when I was like, I don't know, about like, two or three years old was a compilation of these share titles called 300 Ga- great games for windows now that sounds so generic and it probably does because there's so many discs there were uh basically under this title because there were the whole entire market was flooded with these things and but my particular one i can't find anywhere so i've still gotta archive it but basically it had a bunch of like different games for windows 3.11 so or 3.1 so there was like a bunch of like card games a lot of like i don't know tetris games there's basically just basic things that basically showed you how to use your mouse it's pretty simple stuff but i absolutely loved it and i still have the disc today and i probably should archive it to be honest oh yeah definitely but yeah it's it's some cool stuff it was my first ever pc game my uncle was like, hey, you want to play a game? And I'm like, I don't know what video games... Are. Well, my, I probably knew what video games were. Because what this, this was probably when I was three or four years old. I had experience with the Sega Genesis at this point with Street Fighter. So this was probably... I had experience with video games. But I never had any experience with computer games at this point. So it was nice to... Excuse me. It was nice to have a... Uh, have a game or i guess a collection of games that was my own so i guess my first ever game was a bunch of games yeah (laughs) hell yeah that's that's actually kind of cool um that's another thing i love about demos is just like you have a demo disc and you're a kid with no like if that's the first thing you ever had which that's kind of what i had like the first games i ever had were tekken 3 crash team racing and these playstation demo discs or these pizza demo discs it was a good way to have a collection of games without having a bunch of discs yeah and it was like really nice because uh for especially for like people who just couldn't afford video games like it's for instance like the demo disc from pizza or in my case the shareware disc that i had it gave people like the opportunity to play like a demo well basically well it is a demo but basically they could play games and I know for, like, I know some people who had, like, these demo discs and these compilation, like, sharer uh, game discs that they would just play them over and over and over again. And they would, it would be nonstop fun for them because that's all they knew was just this demo. And they're like, oh, this is the game. So it was just, yeah. Like, yeah. Made it really nice. Yeah. Like, whether they're free or they're a few dollars, like demo discs were a pretty good, pretty good bang for yeah. your buck. And now, like you don't like some, some games you don't necessarily need like the full game. Like yeah. I love I love Crash Team Racing to death, but like just having the demo disc and having the what 
one the one track on there like that could entertain you yeah entertain you for anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour like it's fun i'm convinced that i have more hours in the pizza demo disc than i do any game still (laughs) to this day (laughs) that's that's a that's a big take right there (laughs) yeah but it's probably true like i spent hundreds or thousands of hours just in my childhood just playing that just because like i enjoyed it like it was a good little snapshot yeah definitely yeah but um was there anything else you need to say about demo discs or any of that sort of stuff oh yeah i have a whole entire stack here oh uh, you have a whole stack well i didn't come prepared for the i came prepared for the kiosk part oh yeah yeah. demo disc so oh yeah go off on some demo discs for a time being i am good so go for oh it. yeah yeah you can be you can be the resident uh kiosk guy uh, okay S- sounds good yeah you go off on the demo discs so tell us about your demo disc collection so my demo disc collection is real nice sorry if you hear me getting louder i'm actually reaching for another one <laughs> no <laughs> you're good you're, you're perfectly fine yeah i'm just trying to grab what is called a it is the only demo disc that I have that's in a case of its own, because uh-huh. that's the way it was sold in. For the PS2, I have what's called a, a jam pack. Oh, I think I've I I never personally owned one of those, but I did have a my uh, half brother's cousins had a bunch of those for their PS2. Yeah, um, the uh, the jam packs were actually done by the people who did a uh, a little known uh, demo series called PlayStation Underground. <laughs> oh. I Anybody's definitely had with those? a couple of yeah. those. My dad oh, yeah. had a couple of those in the PlayStation magazines. Yeah, and actually actually this uh this demo still has a little sticker. Or not the little sticker, but the little like thing sealing it that has the PS the PlayStation logo on it. Uh-huh. It still says like Jam Pack Summer 2003. Because nice. the way that these were released were uh they were released seasonally basically. Um uh-huh. how these were usually done is they were done normally for games that already come came out or they were on the way to coming out uh-huh. that people didn't know if they wanted to spend a whole at the time fifty dollars per oh, game yeah. I, mean, I, I miss those days i miss those days fifty dollars for a game we're about to go to 70 according to sony but oh, no. like but like place it yeah on here we have war of monsters amplitude atv off-world theory fury 2 uh, well, i had that one yeah, yeah. I had that actual game physically. Yeah. And uh, it has uh, Jet X2O. Not familiar with that game. MLB 2004. World Tour Soccer 2003. A little known game called Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. Oh, I I remember that one. I think I and, got that one PC. And another cool thing that Demo just did is sometimes they didn't only come with just games you can play. Sometimes they came with trailers or videos. So... On this particular demo disc, there are two videos. One for a little-known game called Jack 2. Oh, and another one called... Yeah. The, who, who, who has ever heard of the, the Jack and Daxter series, huh? Nope, never have. <laughs> I'm a Sanic Can't be me. Fan. <laughs> Sanic. Um, and uh, NBA uh, Street Volume 2. Oh. That's my favorite game. Yeah, I love I love uh, sport. <laughs> I love sport ball. Yeah, goal. And, <laughs> and for my PS2, uh, P- the PS2 era was like a weird era because it was the point where there wasn't like six or seven demos on a on a disc anymore. It started getting on to like one or two because <clears throat> originally, like the PS1, it. It, the games came out on a CD, like it was a CD formatted medium. Yeah, and it was on the cusp of, and PS2 was on the cusp of going from CD from the very early library to going to DVD in the later yeah. end. Um, which those are usually signified by blue discs, the CDs were the yeah. Were the, yeah. So if you ever heard blue disc error, that's where that comes from. Mm-hmm. CDs on PS2s, but. I have um I have a few I have a few more PS2 demo discs. So I have actually two copies of Hot Shots Golf and Parappa the Rapper 2. These are on one disc. Wow. One disc. Yeah, Parappa the Rapper 2. I have uh, two copies of a game called Kinetica. It was actually this is actually a demo that's close to my heart. It's the first 
video game that I ever archived. Ah. I, uh, yeah, what I did is I, um, I, I, I found it at Goodwill. And like, what I like to do is I like to just see when I get a game from Goodwill, I like to look it up just to see like what it's worth, whether it's good, what people say about it. What was like, what, what were people's thoughts of it when it was released? Well, this game, I tried searching up the demo and I couldn't find anything on it. Oh. So I was going through a rabbit hole trying to find any information I could on this game. And I couldn't find anything until I found one forum from 2003 or four. I think it was 2004 because it was a year after this game came out. Oh, uh, let me look at the date real quick. Yeah, no, 2002. Oh, uh, wow. Talk, yeah, it was uh, talking about um, talking about this demo disc and how it was released was really weird. So you had to go on Sony's website and there was like this matching game that you had to do. And after you completed this matching game, they would bring up a screen saying, oh, do you want to have this demo? Like, do you want to order this demo to have it set to your house? You'd probably have to pay for shipping, of course. Yeah. But the only way to get this demo was to do this game on Sony's website and basically uh, basically ask for them to send it to you. So it was a weird game because I wasn't able to find any info on it. So all the information that's on the internet currently and all the archive stuff that's of recent is information that I did. Oh, wow. Nice. So I would did everything from going on Reddit to r slash lost media, r slash video games, r slash anything that I could do to find a lead on this. And basically, after it was all said and done, the game's been archived, the art's been archived... It's been put into many databases. Um, yeah, it's one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. Uh, if you, and actually, the the website I did it on. If you want to help, if this one's a disk based pr- preservation website. It's called Redump.org. Um, I'd recommend just look through their game, their list of missing ROMs, because there is a bunch of disk based games or disk based media that's still lost or isn't archived that. If you see it on the list, hit them up. It's a very, very long process, so be patient. But if you want to go on there and archive more games, go for it. Because it's definitely worth it for the long run. Nice. I'll definitely have to check that out. Yeah. Um, I also have World Tour Soccer for the PS2. No. I have so I have SOCOM 2 for the PS2. Oh, I, have, I have Siphon Filter, the Omega Strain, a demo for that for the PS2. Huh. And I have actually, I have a sealed demo that I don't know if I want to open up or not called Whiplash. Oh. And, and it's, it looks like a real wacky game. I really don't know much about it. I've heard um, of it, but I don't know too much about it. Yeah. It's, um, definitely looks real wacky. Um, let's see. What else do I have? I have, I have it, what's called the Sony called it the Interactive CD Sampler fo- Volume 5. And this has NFL Game Day 98, Proper the Rappa, the original one, uh, cool, cool Borders 2, and Intelligent Cube, which Intelligent Cube is like... Oh yeah, that's a fun of, game. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a fun game. And actually, funny, funny enough, uh, out of all those games, if you look at the back, Intelligent Cube is the only one that doesn't have like a little preview window. Huh. So I guess no love for it on this... Uh, this demo disc, rest in peace. Quite unfortunate, because that was probably one of the best games on that disc. Yeah, actually on the back of this, it has little snapshots of Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, Tomb Raider 2, Core Borders 2, which is the only one on... No, and, and a... Yeah, yeah, that's that's the only one that huh? that's on the front that they actually put a preview of, Core Borders 2. Wow. And then, yeah, and then the last one is NFL... NHL Face Off '98. Mm. Yeah, that's really Classic. odd, but yeah, who, who doesn't love some good old hockey? Um, let's see. Oh, and I guess I did. I was a little bit disingenuous when I shamed or I said the demo disc, the physical demo disc, kind of died after the 360 because I actually have some 360 demo discs. Oh, I, I actually have a stack. I don't have all of them with me, but I have my duplicates with me oh. that I brought with me. So. The 360, uh, I think Xbox had a magazine, and they would pack in these cool little demo discs that came in these really, really thin cases. Mm-hmm. 
they're really cool. I have, uh, and they actually numbered them too. So I have numbers 75, 90, and 72. Huh. And 75 is really cool because it actually has a uh, demo for a blue dragon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I've been trying to track down another copy of Blue Dragon because I used to have a copy and then I left it at my brother's and I haven't seen him in like two years. So hopefully I can retrieve it from him back soon at some point. Yeah, and if I could like also put a date to this, uh, the one with the Blue Dragon has a is the October 2007 Ooh. uh disc. And actually, on the back of this, it's really cool. It actually tells you everything that's on the back. Everything from playable demo, demos, video showcases, extra content. Um, it's really cool. So on the back, it says the playable demos are Blue Dragon, Overlord, a game called Juiced 2, Project Silphied, Missile Command, and Carcassonne. And it has a little video showcase. I assume they're like trailers for Call of Duty 4, so Modern Warfare, Bioshock, that was a classic in yeah. Juice Two, which I have nothing no Oh I know no... Juice Two is a racing game. I had oh. I had Oh yeah, I have a little the, picture of it. Yep. I had one of the games uh I wanna say on PS I think it was on PS two or game No, it was on Xbox. I had the first game on original Xbox, I'm pretty sure. Oh dang. Yeah. Oh also, um what's really cool that I didn't know is there's actually like little exclusive art that you can see on this demo disc it it says on the extra content part of it it says art extra content and then it says art beowulf and then art end war so i'm guessing it's like are either either of things that are in those games or art that's from other games so it's a cool little snapshot um oh and there's also a backwards compatibility update hmm that's oh, wild. it was probably a backwards because back then, uh, they only it was kind of like how they do uh, backwards compatibility today on the X, well, on the Xbox One, where uh, they would occasionally like release a certain amount of games and that were backwards compatible, and then eventually they just were like, you know what, let's just make all the Xbox One games for the most part backwards compatible. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, another one that I have is demo disc 90 and it is the 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 demos on here the playable demos on here are 1942 joint strike alone in the dark biotic commando rearmed braid um fable 2 uh fracture galago regions nhl 2k9 some game called sbk08 don't know anything about that and Soul Calibur 4, which is actually the what's on the cover of this demo disc, and it looks really cool. Um, and videos, video wise, it has uh, looks like a oh, it has a walkthrough for Prince of Persia. Oh, that's cool, yeah. And also, it also has Street Fighter 4, a video for that, Warriors Orichi 2, which I don't know what that is, and extra content. It has a Fallout 3 survival guard. Oh, and that's really cool, and it has art. That's just labeled Infinite Undiscovery. I'm assuming it's from another game that's in here, or if it's just on its own. Huh. And then I have one more one more demo disc with me. Um, or at least for the Xbox, I have one more demo disc, which is for Armored Core Four. Oh. And also Monster Madness. This one only has two games on it. Huh. Um, but actually, whoa, whoa, this is this is kind of sick. Um, Xbox Live Arcade games on here. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, it has 3D Ultra Mini Golf Adventures, Boom Boom Rocket, a game called Gyrus, spelled G-Y-R-U-S-S, and Pinball FX, which Pinball FX is really good. I've never played that one before. Yeah, and it has, um, yeah, Pinball FX is really cool. Um, Basically, its whole premise is, it's basically taking, you know how there's really cool cabinets made of game off of like Walking Dead and like other games and stuff or other franchises and stuff. It basically takes those real life arcade cabinets and put them into a digital space. It's really cool. Sounds, Pinball FX is a great game. That sounds awesome. I'll yeah. I want um, to check out sometime. Yeah. In the video showcases, it has a uh, Call of Juarez, uh, God 2 Tournament, Eternal Sonata, which is one of the few Xbox 360 exclusive JRPGs. Oh. Which is really cool. Yeah, it's actually a really cool, crazy game. It's about uh, 
uh, you're playing as uh, what's his name? Chopin, the the composer Chopin. He's on his deathbed, and basically oh. this this JRPG takes place inside of his mind, like he's dreaming the whole entire time. Uh, you're trying to get him the. I think you're trying to get him to wake up, basically. But it's a really wild game, and it's one of the few uh, JRPGs on the Xbox 360 that was exclusive, which, if you know anything about the Xbox 360, not a JRPG system. Yeah. Not even an anime game system, really. Like, that was all Sony's, that was all Sony's territory. So yeah. having having this as one of the few exclusives, it's a solid, solid JRPG, and I do recommend anybody play it if they have it. Um, And then Beautiful Katamari, that was also another thing on the video showcase. And it actually has art from Beautiful Katamari on here, which is really cool. Um, yeah. And I actually have, I have a few more demos before we can move on to the, well, before we can move on to the kiosk part of this yeah. uh, section. Because I, I know you're you're just waiting to start talking about that. I, I can tell. <laughs> I, I've been rambling. No, you're um, good. Um, so, <clears throat> so I have a few more demos. So one of the demos that I have is it came with Parasite Eve for the original uh, PlayStation. Parasite Eve is a cool little like horror-based RPG. It's really cool. Um, it's made by SquareSoft, but yep. in the in the, in the demo disc that came with it, it's called SquareSoft 1998 Collector CD Volume One. I don't know if there's a volume two. This might be the only volume because every single time I try to do research on this, I can't find anything more. But it has a playable demo of Xenogears, which is a wonderful, wonderful RPG. I do recommend that you guys play through that. The, the whole Xeno series, Xeno, Xenogears, Xeno Saga, Xeno, Xenoblade, that, that series is real good. Do recommend. But it also has videos. Actually, well, it says movie in quotation marks for, oh, oh. for Bushido Blade 2. Oh, I've played, um, I played the first one. Never played the second one. Yeah, Bushido Blade is a real good, real good game, real good series. Good uh, series. Brave, yeah, another movie for Brave Fencer, Mursa, Mursashi, Musashi? Oh, Musashi, yes, I know that yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, 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 Musashi. And also a movie for another entry in a little-known JRPG series. It's not real important. Something called A Final Fantasy VIII, I don't know. Oh, I don't um, know about that one. Yeah, I don't know about that my favorite G, uh, RPG of all time, besides yeah. Trigger. Yeah, real obscure, huh? <laughs> yeah, real obscure. Yeah, but this this came with uh, Parasite Eve for the PS One, um, and yeah, it was just some of these some of these you had to buy, some of these just came in magazines. Sometimes they were just given to you for free, but some were even just packed in with games. They're like, hey, who 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 wants more? Like, who doesn't want more with their game? Like, you get a game, you get a demo for something else. Mm -hmm. Like, I think this was the the most fun way to get to sell your product. Yeah, were were demos. <laughs> Those were like the most fun advertisements in the world. Yeah, because it was like a playable ad. Yeah. At home. Yeah, I know. I know the. Um... I know iOS and Android are trying to like try really hard with those like playable ads like today, but they suck. <laughs> and they're just and they're worse versions of already bad games for the most part. So like I guess you can kind of relive that, but you're going to lose a lot of like what really what really made physical video game demos special back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we move on to the kiosks? We should, because those are all the demos I have with me. If I had the rest of my 360 demos, it could easily go to midnight. <laughs> oh, for, for our other viewers watching, it's currently 11.15, so that's 45 minutes of me talking about <laughs> 360 demos that nobody's going to ask for. Uh, At that point, I would just been like, you know what? We're going to add that as an addendum. At that yeah, point, yeah. if it would have been. But anyway, so yeah, yeah, I guess a great segue, this isn't a great segue to kiosks, but let's say, hey, um... Can I ask you a question? <laughs> what are you going to ask me about? Oh, I, I did a pun with kiosk. Can, can I uh, ask you a... Never mind. <laughs> gosh darn it. Oh, gosh. Well, anyways, 
So, like we were talking about kiosks, uh, kiosks were basically the in-store version of demo discs, except for they were this tall cabinet that would hold, like, your a video game console with some extra hardware in it to basic, well, not in the console, but in the cabinet itself to try to keep the console cool because it was meant to be running all the time. And then up until probably the uh, 6th gen era, or no, not 6th gen, 7th gen era, so like the Xbox 360 and the PS3 and the Wii era, all of them had like CRT, so they are always super hot. But yeah, they, yeah, they were yeah. they were essentially the things that you saw in store that you wish you'd saw when you came home. Yes, let's be honest. Everybody wanted their setup to be that. Yeah, and people lucky enough to get those things before they are thrown out. They're they're living my dream, and I'm jealous. <laughs> and I'm speaking. See if I were. Well, to I'm glad they're saved. <laughs> see if I were to have a kiosk of any console that I remember using, I think I specifically would probably go for the Wii one and here's my segue into my story so I growing up I my father uh, and my mother were have been separated basic and had been divorced since I was two years old so one of the things that we had to uh, one of the things in the agreement was that every uh, like every week at least once a week my dad would get to see me and so we'd hang out in my town for like three three hours just like we'd get food and then we'd like most of the things we just do is we just go hang around the mall and one of our this particular mall that we went to had a GameStop and before they had moved the GameStop they had it uh, right next to an Auntie Anne's and I know this really doesn't mean anything to the story but I'm adding it anyways and that was a really good Auntie Anne's that's all I want to say Auntie Anne's is great What's Annie 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 Annie's is great and I just associate with the Annie Anne's and this and particularly this GameStop, because I would go get any ants, and then the GameStop would always smell like pretzels as well. So it's beautiful. So I walk into this GameStop. Smells like Bless pretzels. Annie. Smells amazing. And I'd go in there, and there was this put in at this particular time, this had to have been around mm, 2007, I want to say, roughly about 2007. I walk in, there's a Wii. There's a particular demo on this on this particular Wii. Ooh. It's Super Mario Galaxy. Okay. Super Mario Galaxy. Easy. I wasted... Oh. So this particular demo kiosk, I don't know why, had the full game. They didn't have a demo. They had the full Super Mario Galaxy game on it. Okay. So I okay. used to waste an hour, at least an hour and a half, every single week, playing that game on that Wii. It got so bad, my dad bought the game for me, and I still have it. And I yet, I still played on that kiosk. <laughs> Honestly, why not? Like, here's the thing. Kiosks were A, made to be fun, and they are fun. Come yeah. on. It, okay, okay. Play, play a game on, like, a Wii. Then play a game at a Wii kiosk. Tell me where do you want to be? What, what, what space do you want to be? I mean... I'll be real if with you. If you say just the Wii, you're lying. I'll be real. I'm be real with you. Back then, the kiosk. Today, at home. Why? Because that kiosk was probably rarely ever wiped down and it's probably disgusting. But but here, let me throw this at you. Kiosk at home. I mean, yes. If there was a kiosk at home, yes. We kiosk at home, yes, definitely. Because the TV is at would at that point be at my eye level. And I don't have to worry about trying to point where the heck my remote's supposed to be. Plus, I don't have to worry about the remote, like, getting lost or anything. Because it's just going to be there attached to the kiosk. Yo, okay, okay. So, hear me out. I'm about to say something. It's going to be a hot take. Okay. And I think you're going to agree with me. And okay. you're going to laugh because it's true. Okay. So, video game kiosks? Yes. Or a poor man's arcade. <laughs> but they're just as cool if they're not cooler than arcade. Cabinets. As somebody, tell, me I'm, tell, as, me I'm, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> as somebody who unfortunately didn't grow up in the era where arcades were like prevalent in like life, yes, I completely agree with you. Because I, where I grew up, we had like a small like hometown arcade place, but the games were just always broken down 
And I swear, the only song that this place ever played was Rock You Like a Hurricane. What, I, why? I don't know why. It, this is the only song they've ever played. And then I go to GameStop, and I'm like, yeah, I, this is way more fun. It's completely free. I never got kicked out. I It got bad to the point where I literally... Luckily, I never got to the point where I asked the people to swap out the games. But it did get bad to the point where I actually... My dad ended up, like, having conversations with the staff at this particular GameStop. But the sad thing is, this game... They ended up doing a whole lot of things to the mall and moving things around. The Annie Ann's... Uh, luckily, the Annie Ann's and the GameStop at this particular place moved in the relative same spot together so the pretzel smell of this GameStop never went away so it was rather nice however this GameStop in particular uh the kiosks were really sad because this was around the time I want to say this is around the time the Wii U came this had to have been 20, 2010 or 2011 that it ended up moving to its current location if it's still there I haven't been to this mall in probably close to about three years but if this mall, uh, if the GameStop is still there, got really sad because the Wii U's uh, demo was never good because they decided to change the demos on the kiosks to mostly videos, except for there was a few playable demos. Like, I think there was a playable demo for Zombie U. There was a playable demo for, I want to say, the first, Mar the first Mario Maker game that was on the Wii. And then there was a couple other ones but there wasn't a whole ton i think it was mario yeah. kart 8 mario kart 8 I think oh yeah mario kart 8 is that was one of the other ones but i think one of the unmost underrated kiosks and it wasn't even really a kiosk it was just the console was there is the ds ones oh I yeah i'll tell oh. you how many times now GameStop in particular didn't really have much uh, experience with the DS kiosk. I think I did two. And one of them was for, I think, Pokemon Diamond or Pearl. And the other game was Professor Layton and Ooh. the Curious Village. So, one DS kiosk we had, we had them for uh, Nintendogs. Oh, uh, yes. I think I did see that too, but I didn't play it because I think at that point this particular DS that was on its last life and, like, somebody had put so many circular scratches in it because I think the uh, game previously in there might have been Pokemon Ranger. So, hmm. yeah, the capture system in that game, if you aren't careful with your DS screen, you can totally ruin it. Luckily, I never ruined it. Yeah. But, yeah, Nintendo's, I remember... Uh, I remember distinctly more about the the DS kiosk and the 3DS kiosk at Toys R Us when that was still around, because it was just it was weird because in this particular uh, at this particular time they had re remodeled this whole entire uh, uh, Toys R Us so it didn't have like the area that it, like used to have uh, where it was like in the corner of the store now it's just like in the back. A smack dab in between the bicycles and the baby's rs section and they just had this one particular 3ds that was just there right next to where the checkout uh area was for the video games and i odd oh and they also had one for d the actually this was back when it was still ds and i remember playing trying to play mario party ds and i I wish I got more time with it because I remember actually enjoying that one because this was around the time that I had picked up Mario Party 8 on the Wii and I, and I really liked that game. So it was nice. I don't remember... I'm trying to think if there was any other kiosks. I don't really have... I guess that's the only like experiences that I really have with kiosks at least when the consoles were brand new. However... When I, uh, when the town that I used to live in, they, uh, around 2013, uh, no, this was, yeah, this was probably around, uh, 2013, we had a retro game store open up in our area, and this
this was the first time I ever heard of a retro video game store, so I was pretty excited. And they had, a particular this one, they had an N64 kiosk that I thought was pretty Ooh. cool. And they, Those were some of my favorites. And that one was cool and all. But when they moved to their new location, because they actually moved where there used to be, like, a party store or something. Because this used to, this particular building used to be an appliance store. And then it became, like, a Halloween store for, like, a short amount of time. But then they remodeled it so it was a, it was a pizza place in the front. And then in the back was a, one half was a, um was the retro video game store and the other side was a virtual reality arcade and i've got plenty of stories about the virtual reality arcade so i'll probably touch on that if we ever touch on arcades ever mm -hmm. which i'm sure we probably will at some point in the near future so that's a story for another time but we'll focus on the retro video game store at this time so around this time this was they moved it was probably this had been i want to say 26 15 or 2016 they had moved they have moved over to this particular uh new location which i'm pretty sure they're still at and they got a playstation one demo kiosk and it was really cool because um you could like see this was the first time that you could actually like see what game was in it because apparently i don't i don't think this came stock but this particular uh Comp uh, like business like store had a clear shell PlayStation that was really cool, and they just put it in there. And I don't think that was there to begin with, but it was uh, like I don't think it was original to that kiosk, but it was pretty cool because and they had a couple of like game cases that were like shoved in with this console too, so that was really nice. And then I remember them having uh I think it was. A GameCube one. I remember a GameCube, GameCube one there too. But those were cool. Oh, oh GameCube. I have, I have a, I have a little story about a GameCube kiosks. A GameCube kiosk. Yeah. Um, so. I was so, gonna say, is this particularly a McDonald's one by any chance? No, but I did grow up with those. Actually, uh, my my McDonald's in here on. I wish I snagged them before they took them out, but we had both the N64 and GameCube uh, uh, kiosks there. See, which had, yeah. My local area, we had, uh, we didn't have a McDonald's that had a kiosk until I was probably eight or nine years old, and by this time, the Wii had already been out for like two or three years, and they just had, they had one kiosk that had like three games, like three uh games in this particular gamecube but the funny thing about it was they would swap the games like every like couple of months but the thing is that every single game that they had in the kiosk was a LAN game so oh. they had um oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. i think the one that i particularly remember playing is this specific pac-man racing game that Ooh, was really cool. What was it like? Uh, Pac it was like Pac-Man Kart or Pac Racers or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember what it was, but it was really cool, and I absolutely liked that. I'm pretty sure that was we had four-way multiplayer on that one. And then there was the Mega Touch kiosks, which I don't know if you've ever seen those. They usually you see them now in like bars, and like you'd see them in some uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. But they were like this uh, table side uh, kiosk. And the ones that bars and everything uh, cost money. But this one in particular at the McDonald's, I don't know if it cost money or if it did. It was for like the premium games, which I never had any interest in. I basically picked the games that were like, hey, find the five differences between these two photos. And yeah. I liked those ones, and then there was a couple where there were, like, art games. But, yeah, but what was your story about GameCube Kiosk? So, GameCube Kiosk. Um, so, we my family went to a Best Buy. I think we were buying our... We, we bought our TV that my parents probably have. It was... No, no. It was before that. It was... Uh, my parents were there to buy something else. 
but they had a GameCube kiosk there, and I was I was there the whole entire time they were there, mm -hmm. which they were there for almost three hours just trying to figure out everything that they were gonna buy. Uh -huh. So I was just standing there, and I was playing a little little known game. Uh, I don't I don't think uh, anybody knows about it right now. Not really big at all. Called Mario Sunshine, oh. um, for the GameCube. And I sat there and I played it for three hours. I loved the game. I, I loved it a lot. But if you know anything about me now as a person <laughs> and how I feel about Mario Sunshine, it is my least favorite Mario game. Just oh. because, just because, like, I played that back when Sunshine was, Sunshine was either before it came out or just like when, when it came out. I was playing it at the kiosk, and I didn't really get to play it at home at all. My friends had it, but we never played it. We always played Smelee when we were brooding up the GameCube. But I never really touched it. So going on to play, like, Galaxy, like, the two games that were really around me were Mars 64 DS in the Galaxy game. So I played those a fuck ton. Mm -hmm. uh, and just personally, like, me, and I know a lot of other people, like, agree sometime. Like, going from... Mario Galaxy to Mario Sunshine is night and day. Like Mario, it feels it feels like it makes it makes Sunshine feel like such a more unpolished game. Like you have things such as like you don't have the backwards long jump or not the backwards long jump. Um, you don't have the long jump in the game, which I guess yeah, that that that's supposed to be the substitution for it. But just the overall feel, like it's very slidey. Like, you kind of play as... If, if you ever 100%ed Mario Galaxy, you could play as Luigi after getting 120 stars with Mario. And the way Luigi played is he was very slippery, and he couldn't really stop immediately. He always slid around. That's how I felt like with Mario in every single level. It felt like a ice level, and I just didn't enjoy it. It felt really infuriating. Uh, now that the 3D All-Stars collection, which I own, is out, I'm probably going to give sunshine another chance um it's probably gonna be a better experience because it can't be as bad as like me just diving into it after playing galaxy after a decade of more not playing the game I but don't... like it's 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 at the bottom of my list of the 3d marios never played sunshine um i can't recommend it yet <laughs> And if you if you played Galaxy, I really can't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if if you haven't played Galaxy, then go for it. That's the only thing I can say. Yeah. Anyway. If you if you haven't played Galaxy, you'll love it. If you have played Galaxy, you might have a hard time. I understandable. Yeah. Going back to how you mentioned uh, melee, so and going far back to when I mentioned a uh, game crazy, so. Ooh. In this particular time, my dad and I were trying to look for a memory card for my PlayStation One because my mom was, my mom was always very behind in buying us consoles. Like I got the PlayStation One, I think in two thousand four or two thousand five. So a few years into the PS Two's. Uh... Yeah, a few years. Um, by this point, I. I think we were almost coming up, or it was the year before we would hear any news about the PS3, and mm -hmm. maybe we had just gotten information about the Xbox 360, and my mom buys us a PS1, and she buys me one of my favorite PlayStation 1 games of all time, Spider-Man, for the PlayStation 1, Ooh. and I have to play that game, and I could get... I could get through most of the game in like three hours and then get to the end in where you have to uh run away from monster ock which is a combination of carnage and doc ock and as a kid this particular creature kind of frightens me so i would just shut off the console well <laughs> my mom for some reason thought it got really annoying that i would play this game over and over and over again so she gave me some money and was like, hey, have her dad take you to some game store and get yourself a PlayStation 1 memory card so you can save your progress and stop having to replay this section over and over <laughs> and over again. So I said, sure. So we went, my dad and I, we went to 
both the GameStop and the EB Games in our in our town, in my town, and no one had PlayStation One memory cards. So we went across to the street where uh, where there was the Hollywood Video and the Game Crazy store, and when we were looking for a memory card, not only did I see a Dreamcast kiosk, and this was the first time I ever knew anything other than the Genesis, because I only knew Sega as the Genesis and Sonic. That's all I knew, and I never bothered to ask anybody what ended up happening. I was just like, oh yeah, I know about the Genesis, and I know about Sonic, and then I know at some point Sonic got put on Nintendo and PlayStation 2 consoles, so... I was just like, oh, yeah, cool. And then my dad was like, yeah, the Dreamcast was a thing that came, that was like a short-lived Sega console. And I was like, oh, this sounds cool. But also what was there was a, was a GameCube kiosk. Now, this wasn't an official GameCube kiosk. Uh, this one was a special type of kiosk where they would have four televisions that were facing outward in like a, like a plus symbol, I guess, if you were doing a top-down view. And each TV had a different uh, console to it. So there's one that had a PlayStation 2, one that had a GameCube, one that had an Xbox, and one that had a, uh, a Dreamcast. And in this particular one that was facing uh, the section that had all like the Nintendo games was, because this kiosk was like basically smack dab in the middle, was Super Smash Brothers Melee. And at oh, the, this yeah. was... This was like a few years before uh, Super Smash Brothers Brawl came out on the on the Wii, and I knew nothing about this. And I'm just looking at this game, and I'm like, "This is so weird. You're like Mario, and you're fighting Pikachu. Like, what is this? I never, pl- I didn't play it uh, at that time, but I was like, this is cool. And then my, d- I'm surprised I never asked my dad about it because. But I'm also not too surprised because my GameCube growing up was literally a console that I only played Tony Hawk's Underground 1 and 2 on and Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2. So literally that's... Oh, and I played uh, Donkey Konga. That was all I ever played on my GameCube. So those were the only games I had. And so I was just like, oh, this is cool. And then when Brawl came out, I was like, wait a minute. I vaguely remember this game but on GameCube. But I also remember it not looking as good on GameCube because at this point in time, I didn't. I don't think I had a Wii, but my uncle did, and he also had component cables, so he had like the best video possible. So I was just like, "Wow, this is this is cool." And I used to sit on like the top bunk bed because he had a bunk bed at this point, and used to watch him play, play the. But I eventually did play uh, Brawl at a kiosk. Ooh. and that was pretty fun and then my dad was like yeah we'll just get this for you and i nice. basically used to think that brawl was the best smash game for the longest time and till i pl- got ultimate in the end of 20 <laughs> when did that game come out 2018 yeah the end of 2018 when that game came yeah. out, i bought it day one digital because yeah. i was dumb but also not dumb because now I have the game always. But yeah, it was tons of fun. To be fair, uh, everybody thought Brawl was the best Smash until your friend picked up Meta Knight. <laughs> oh gosh. No, no. So here's the thing, though. None of my friends actually played like any of the Smash games growing up until. Oh really? I don't think I had a friend that played Smash until I think I was probably in eighth grade, and at that point, uh. I think the Wii U had all the Wii U had already come out at this point. So, and, but I but Smash, uh, Smash Four didn't come out yet. So my friends and I oh pl- tried to play uh, Smash Online, like back in the early days of playing Smash Online. So that was fun stuff. But that's a whole another story entirely. That I'm not gonna delve into trying to think if there's any more uh kiosk things oh yeah ps3 kiosks Ooh. let me tell you about those so there's a particular uh game that i played at this particular ps3 uh kiosk that was in what i'm going to just assume was the original gamestop the one that i was talking about uh that mm-hmm. i played uh 
what was it um the wii and i used to play uh super mario galaxy on this particular uh across like across the because they had the kiosks in this particular gamestop there was the door entrance and this was whole entire glass there was a door entrance and then you'd walk inside and you'd be looking at the back of the store to your right would be the wii and i think maybe the xbox 360 kiosk and then the on the other side was the playstation and psp kiosk and what i do is i would play on the playstation 3 kiosk because especially around the 2006 2007 era because my dad had gotten a ps3 pretty early on i think he got his during the second week of its launch so yes my dad paid like 599 or however much it was yeah, the, yeah, it's, yeah like a 600 console yeah he, he bought the 60 gig model and we take yeah. we still have it but rest in peace yellow light of death yeah holy so, crap oh yeah, yeah sad times so what we ended up doing uh was i would as much as i would uh play on the wii one uh this ps3 one in particular had I think it was the first or the second Dynasty Warriors Gundam game. Ooh. And I absolutely love this because this was peak Transformers okay. fandom for me. So seeing oh. another thing that was robots that would fight other robots, I thought was awesome. But the thing is, I never got this game on PS3. I never got Oof. this game on PS3. However, I did get a. I did later on get the third or fourth game on Xbox 360, because my brother had a 360, and for some reason I just didn't find it as fun. I didn't find it as fun, but what I did do was I ended up getting a Gundam game for the PS2, and I have yet to try it, but I've been told it plays a lot like dynasty warriors gundam so i'm gonna have to check it out at some point okay so now that we've talked about all these kiosks all the different varieties there were we gotta gotta we gotta do the question we gotta do the thing the thing uh, that you must do compare all com, com, let's compare let's compare first what's your favorite What's your favorite kiosk? And the second question I want it to be, who do you think who do you think's kiosk game was the strongest, like company wise, like throughout their whole entire life? Because like I see, I immediately want to jump to Nintendo, but Sega's kiosk game is insane. Like those they have some of the nicest, coolest, sleekest looking kiosks for their consoles. Like the Dreamcast one is one of the dream their Dreamcast ones are real cool looking. The ones that they did for Genesis with like the chromed out TV like uh, border, like that's real sick. And plus, they always have like the really cool custom art on there. But Nintendo always goes full Nintendo, puts the name all over the console, puts the puts the um, the characters all over the console, and especially with like the Game Boy, the Game Boy ones have always been cool. Like they have a Game Boy kiosk that's in the shape of a fucking Game Boy. Like, they their 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 kiosk game is real strong. So like, w so with like all all the kiosks you've experienced in your life, like who do you think is done the best? But let's we'll start with your favorite one. Let's we'll start with your favorite one. Uh, let me think. Uh, if I were to say my favorite kiosk, like not like including like the ones that I've had the most time with. Mm hmm. Ah. Uh, huh. I want to say the ones that I have the most, like, the one that I, like, design most is probably the GameCube one, which, if you're watching this, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, is going to be the one that's on the screen right now, right next to the Super Nintendo one. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to pick my favorite uh, kiosk that I've seen of all time, probably the PlayStation 1. Ooh, the yeah. PlayStation 1, because something, I never grew up with it, but something about it is just interesting. Now, yeah. 
the weirdest kiosk and I think the most interesting kiosk that I've ever seen is probably the Xbox 360. But I think yeah. the Xbox 360, the reason why was one thing for certain is that the Xbox 360 one, oddly enough, had this long plastic, oddly enough, had this long plastic piece that would go in between the controller and the kiosk itself. And so it was like really weird. But also, because the Xbox 360 got a, a major overhaul like midway through its life for the for the operating system itself and how it changed from like those tab like uh, menus to like the free flowing like I don't know what it's ca- I don't know what it's called and I'd have to look it up but when they changed over and added like avatars well I think they had avatars back in like the tab like one oh excuse me gosh I'm feeling hiccupy right now Oof. enough yeah not fun but anyways uh when they changed to their newer one, I knew a lot of kiosks that were still, for some reason, not up to date yet. So you would see the, like this relic of the past of these like the tab like um, design to it. And I remember seeing that at one point, like, and it would have been like, "What console is this?" Cause, and I was just like, "This is weird." And then I would look at it, and I'm like. So it was like, yeah, Xbox 360, oddly enough, despite the fact that I never really had any experience outside of, like, the couple of years that my brother had, and I'm very certain he still has it, um, it was pretty cool. That one and the the original Xbox. Ooh. The original Xbox one, I distinctly remember being very cool, but that was just because I I, to me... I felt the Xbox, the original Xbox, was a pretty rare console because even though I didn't have a whole ton of friends growing up when I was a little kid, mm-hmm. I didn't know anyone else that had an Xbox. Everyone else that I knew had a PS2 and a GameCube. I was Honestly, the only kid that had both the PS2, the I, GameCube, and the Xbox 360. I, 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 I can echo that, honestly. Like, I was the only one growing up with the original Xbox and also, like, not the steal from you, but like yes, the the Xbox, the Xbox kiosks are tied for my favorite. Like, yeah. okay, the the original Xbox when Microsoft dropped the original Xbox, they went all out. They made the fucker green. They made it glow green. They put everything around it to like represent what the console like felt like. Yeah. It was really always zany. They they did one where they like had tubes, like like green. Yes, the tubes. Yeah, yes. the tubes. They they had they had the one that uh. The, the console itself, you could see it in a clear glowing green case, and it had just a glowing green X above it. Like, yes. Xbox went all about, like, like, yes, there's some, like, there had, there, there's, of course, there's ones that have cooler designs, but, like, Xbox, the original Xbox, they knew exactly what they were doing with it, and I love the aesthetic that they are putting on. Yes. <clears throat> oh, the t- 10 out of 10, the original Xbox kiosks are fantastic, but, yeah, I was the only kid growing up with with one like all my friends like just like you all ps2 all gamecube um yeah 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 the original xbox is definitely tied for tied for my favorite kiosk i think i think my favorite my other favorite kiosk uh less less random awesome memory more recent awesome memory is uh i really love the switch the switch ones this the switch ones are the switch ones are there's this particular kiosk that has two giant sides of like it's shaped like a switch except the the left joy-con is raised a little bit and yeah it's it's a kiosk that makes it look like a switch like i i really love it like i it's just a good reminder that like kiosks aren't dead yet and i'm glad that there is still some fun ones they're still having fun they're still designing them well especially um i think i think nintendo has done a really good job throughout the years uh doing really good kiosks and making like any kid who grows up nowadays to just like see something fun and like eventually talk about it like we we are right now mm-hmm. like i'm glad that there's people there the companies that are still putting out quality kiosks that make good yeah. memories yeah also i totally just remembered a repressed memory and i'll explain to you why it was repressed so they don't have it 
and the and I'm, they don't have the Walmart in this town that we're both in now. They don't have it there anymore. But way before it did its redesign in the electronics section, they had kiosks, but they weren't kiosks. It was mostly just a console that was hooked up to a TV that was mounted to the top of the uh, game display. But I uh. swear, I... It would be you would stand there and play a game for like less than five minutes and your neck would cramp up. Oh so yeah. Much. Oh. Oh, you mean the ones with the TV mounted all the way to the fucking. Yes. Those yeah. Ones. Oh, mm. uh, the fucking and, the, the first row theater seat looking ass fucking chaos. Yes. And Man. they weren't the only ones that had this issue. Nuh uh. Oh, Toys R Us had that. Toys R Us. Toys R Us was bad, but you want to know who was bad about it as well, just as easily. Best True. Buy. Oh, best. Oh, best dude. buy. But the the game the GameCube kiosk that I was playing at. <laughs> that's out of that story. Yeah, that was that was one of those. Oh yeah, no Best Buy. Mm. I'm glad that their kiosk. They end up moving their away from their standard kiosk. At least the last time I was in there, which the last time I was in a Best Buy was back during I think when the Wii U was still relatively new. And they just all they did was they just had like a a shelf that had a Wii U like in a box like in a clear like acrylic box that was just like bolted like down to like the shelf and had the Wii U in it and then it had like a TV uh, like a flat screen TV that it was connected to and you would just play the Wii U and it was like it had like this weird like sh- metal strap that was attached to like the game pad so you wouldn't steal yeah. it. And you would play it, and I don't remember playing anything on it that... Oh, and another kiosk. The PlayStation iToy. Oh, those... Okay, Yo. those kiosks. Okay, me. Xbox, yeah. yes. Cool. They're cool design and everything. But my favorite kiosk is the iToy ones. Because okay. it felt like you were in the game. And it was so cool. Because, like, my dad never got the iToy. My mom, of course, never got the iToy. Because by this time, iToy wasn't even cool. But I remember I would be, it would be like the um, the security cameras. Like, you'd see in, like, department stores. It was like that. But it was a video game. And I thought it was so cool. Yeah. Because I would walk in front of it and do all the stuff. And, of course, I, the camera was never pointed at the right direction at the right angle for me to actually be able to play it, but I would pretend to play it, and it was just so cool, and I would beg my dad, like, Dad, can I get the iToy? Dad, we can't get the iToy. No, and then my dad got the PS3, and then we got uh, a actually pretty obscure uh, game called Eye of Judgment, which was a... It was kind of like a tabletop like card game, but you would <laughs> use uh, the PlayStation 3's camera to... Uh, using a special mat that you would place in front of it and then you put the cards down and it would the characters would show up on the screen it was pretty cool and i begged my dad for that and he got me that and that's probably my only experience with the iToy itself but those kiosks were really cool i i have a question what do you remember those kiosks that i i can't even put a console to it but i remember a kiosk that did this where you you had you you had like of course the display you had the console showing you had the controller in your hand, but also they had buttons that when you pressed it it would put a different demo in play or put a video up or you could like change two things. You remember that like pressing a button and like having it change the game immediately to another demo or a video play. Do you remember I that? Vaguely remember this. This might have been my early days of using kiosks. Yeah, because I think those are real early. Like, I think I, I remember, I definitely 100% remember doing that. But I can't really, like, but put I don't a know what console it would have been. Or, game or anything to that. I just remember I press a button, video played, or a new demo was available. I can't even put a time frame, honestly. I just remember it happening. I definitely, like I definitely remember that more with. Uh... I remember that more with, like, I think there was a store that I went to at one point that would have a button, but I don't I don't remember if it was for game trailers or if it was for movie trailers. Huh. 
but also yeah. <clears throat> oh, I was gonna say like also. Uh, do you mind if I tie it like we 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 I bring back devos again because uh, yeah, what... it, also, it also ties in with kiosks. So oh. Nintendo Nintendo always did something really cool, and I think it stopped. I think it stopped with the Wii. Oh. Um, I think it still happened with the 3DS up until its death. But uh, what Nintendo liked to do, at least for their consoles and their DS demo units, is they actually made specific carts for those demos or discs for those for those demos. Like there was demo discs. Like the GameCube demo discs are highly collectible, and they actually came in cases with manuals. Uh, yeah, to the retailer. They came in, like, actual GameCube cases. Uh, the DS ones, I don't really know if they came in cases, with the exception of maybe, like, Metroid Prime Hunters, but that's that comes in a sleeve. Ah. But, like, yeah, Nintendo, what they usually did is they didn't do anything digitally. It was, or burnt anything to consoles. What they did is they did like demo discs or demo carts like ds there's a couple there's a couple dozen demo carts for the ds uh there's a lot of not for resale uh carts for the 64 in the snes um a lot of not for resale resale stuff for um for um the gamecube the gamecubes are it's probably the most valuable demo kiosk um demo kiosk demo discs that you can find they're highly collectible and they're really cool. They come with a lot of cool games, a lot of cool videos, a lot of cool extras. Huh. Really, really cool. Yeah. And so Nintendo always had that habit of just putting things in a physical form. And they were supposed to be destroyed, but of course, people always got them. Kind of reminds me of how, uh, thinking about that, I want to say it was the Diamond and Pearl, or it might have been the Platinum, but it was, for- it was about. Fortune Pokemon where it it was a demo cartridge yep. but it was only a demo because they had blo- because they had a, a piece of code in there that set a physical barrier in the game however if you got your hands on this particular cartridge and found a way to hack it you could get past that and you could just play the whole entire game oh yeah and actually another cool thing pokemon pokemon related uh and also demo related uh, you remember when we got those advertisements? It was usually with it was actually with the DS ones, like Diamond and Pearl, Platinum, um, Black and White, uh, uh, like the 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 fourth, fifth, sixth gen games. Um, there was also cartridges. So when they remember when they were advertising, hey, come into GameStop and get a Vatini or get a Drach. Yes, or something. I yeah, yeah. was a sucker for those, especially during fifth gen, which. If anyone knows knows me knows me well, oh, yeah, I gen. absolutely adore fifth gen Pokemon because this was around the time where I was old enough to be like conscious, like, hey, this is going on. Hey, Dad, take me to GameStop. I'll bring my bring my DS w- with you. I'm going to get the shiny Pokemon. Oh yeah. Well, fun fact: those those actual uh, those Pokemon they were actually on cartridges that were on self contained cartridges that were that kind of used DS download in a way yeah. to give you those things. And actually, yep. those cartridges are also highly collectible. Maybe oh, I, more I, so. I than... Imagine so. Like that'd be cool to be like, hey, uh, I can get you a shiny uh, Victini, and be like, oh, cool. Actually, I had, I think they start, actually, I started doing that way back during, uh, second gen remakes during, uh, during the fourth gen era, because I got, um, I didn't get the shiny, um, uh, shiny, uh, Raikou, Raikou, whatever. Oh, Raikou the dog, the electric yeah, dog? and I didn't get, um, the Entei, but I did get, uh, Suicune. And I absolutely loved Suicune, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And then I killed my brother Suicune, and because we found out you could capture it in those games post, post sec, post post game, because it was after you beat the game a second time, and uh, 
my brother's like, you gotta give me your shiny one, and I'm like, until you capture yours in your game, and then you can give me your uh, non-shiny one, and I'll give you your shiny one back, and at this point, I was like, fine, I didn't even care at that point, point. and I don't uh, know if I ever, if he ever traded me back or not, because I haven't picked up any of those, and played any of those Pokemon games, like, all the way through since probably the 3DS came out. And that's a whole nother story as to why I don't care about the 3DS and a lot of its games. The, the only 3DS game that I can really vouch for is I I think Shovel Knight has the best version on the 3DS just because they put extra detail into the 3D layering, layering of the environment and stuff. And I think it's... A, I, I love Yakko. Yeah. I'm, I'm a Yacht Club fanboy. Yeah. So, yeah, make fun of me if you want. I love Yacht Club. Shovel Knight's great. Um, but yeah, I think that's the best utilization, or one of the best, like, versions of that game. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, dude, so much, so many cool, like, memories with just, like, demo this and, like, yeah. chaos and stuff. Yeah, um, was there anything else that you wanted to say? Anything else that you can think of before we move on to our last section? Um, I think I'm, I think I've said everything I had to say, um, yeah, Xbox uh, Kiosk kick ass. Yeah, Xbox Kiosk <laughs> do kick ass. Uh, so, in this section, uh, that I'm going to dub, uh, um, basically, this is the, I don't know, I actually have a name for this yet, but basically, uh, on Twitter early today, I and in some other places, I asked people, "Hey, what is your experiences with uh, with kiosks and demos?" So I'm gonna pull up Twitter now and see who's all responded. I think we only have one response. I'm gonna check to see if we have any other responses on Facebook. Um. Uh, doesn't look like. Uh, any on Facebook so I'll just go on to Twitter and find my notifications so from we have one this time around so I guess we can just commentate on just this one so it'll be a this particular part of the podcast will be a short one but um, uh, Yukino Cookie on Twitter says Growing up, uh, they had a CD demo for a Barbie game that they played on their old clunky computer, uh, and apparently it only had like 10 minutes of content, but they loved it so much and they would replay it over and over again to the point where the CD actually broke. Oof. So, yeah, um, coming from personal experiences, uh, I've been close to breaking CDs before. Uh, by playing them over and over and over again, but never a game CD. It was, I I did it with a burned uh, mixtape that my mom made me years ago that I played so many times because it was the only music I had for the longest time, and it broke. Yeah, my only experience with, uh, <laughs> with uh, games breaking like that is, ironically, uh, both of my dad's Pizza Hut demo discs. Uh, I played them both up to the point that they could not be read anymore. Oh, gosh. It, it's bad, but and, yeah, I did this it. This is I... why we archive stuff, in case the originals break. Yep, indeed. <laughs> but yeah. Yep. Uh, well, I guess I kind of wish we had more to talk about, but it doesn't look like we have anyone that responded. So I guess that is a short... Uh, uh, viewer uh, response. So yeah, um, was there any any last minute things you want to want to say? Um, can't really think about anything else. Um, All right. I think I think I think I think we've both said plenty. I think we've both both hit it on. So yeah, yeah, we yeah we both so, stated uh, wider to us what our experiences, really mm -hmm. cool ones. You know. Yeah. Well. We won't know uh, when the next podcast will be recorded or even upload. But until next time, the podcast is... You say something. 
Follow me at twitch.tv slash St. Gunjack. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. In that case, uh, we are ending it. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Uh, we will um, figure out uh, social media stuff in the meantime. But in the meantime, follow... Uh, Follow myself, Liz Returnus at Returnus Tweets, and you can where where can people find you at Isaac? Um, you can find me on Twitter at at Saint Gunjack. Wow, heard it here. So, folks. yeah, yeah. So, uh, in that case, uh, farewell, everyone, and have yeah, a beautiful you. time. Y'all have a good one. Peace. <laughs> It's now safe to turn off the podcast.